you know the story as, as it goes. The, the son took all that he had and, and went out and, and squandered it. He wasted it on, on wild living. And after he had lost everything, then the, the country hit a recession. Then they hit bad times. There was lots of unemployment. There was lots of people who, who didn't have food. At that point, the prodigal son found a job feeding pigs. Now, there was no worse job for a, a Jewish boy to do than to, to be feeding pigs. Pigs were considered to be unclean. And if you were out in a pig pen feeding the pigs, others in the Jewish community wouldn't help you because you were unclean. You had, had put yourself in, in such a, a horrible spot. And so this, this boy had no one. And he said that, it says that he was so hungry that he would have been glad to, to eat the, the garbage that he was feeding the pigs. And then he got an idea. He said, you know, I'm not worthy to go back and be considered my, my father's son again, but I know how my father treats his servants. And my father's servants have it a lot better than I have it, and so maybe I could go back and ask for his forgiveness and see if he wouldn't hire me as, as one of his, his servants. Then listen to what happened. Verse 20, So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, the father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Now, it was a breach of, of, uh, for, of dignity for an elderly Jewish man to run. You know, he was always supposed to move kind of slowly and stately. And, and for this elderly Jewish man to, to run, it was, it was an indignity. But he saw his son. And he wanted to embrace his son. He wanted to bestow grace upon his son. He, he wanted his relationship with his son to be restored. And, and so it says that he, he ran. You know, he would have been wearing something that would have been similar to a dress. And, and he would have had to have picked it up, and others probably saw him running out there and, and laughed at him or, or pointed uh, at him at, at what he was doing. The father would have been very undignified in, in running out to, to meet his son. But grace-filled acts don't always appear dignified. Grace-filled acts do not always appear dignified. And, and others don't always understand what, what we're doing. It says that the father saw his son while he was still a long way off. I believe that we have an example of a father who has never forgotten about his son. It's not an issue that when, when his son left with his inheritance, the, the father said, I want nothing to do with you anymore. But it was an issue that when that father saw his son in the distance, he longed to be reunited with, with that son. He knew his son was not coming to, to demand more, but the fact that his son was returning indicated to the father that he had a broken and contrite heart. With the son's return, the father knew that there would be reconciliation. In his short story, The, the Capital of the World, Ernest Hemingway tells the story of a of a Spanish father and his teenage son. This father and son had had, had such an argument that they that they parted ways. The, the son's name was, was Paco. Paco was a very common Spanish name. And uh, after Paco and his father had parted ways, the father went around the city diligently trying to, to find his son, but, but to no avail. As the last was resort that the father placed an ad in the in the Madrid newspaper hoping his son would see the ad and respond to it the ad read dear Paco please meet me in front of the newspaper office at noon all is forgiven love your father as Hemingway tells the story the next day at noon as the father went and, and stood in, in front of the newspaper office 800 young men by the name of Paco came in order to be reunited seeking the forgiveness of their father. In the story of the, the prodigal son, the father did not hesitate opening his arms to his son. 
He did not hesitate welcoming him. He didn't hesitate receiving him with no conditions. He didn't hold it over him the rest of his life. But rather, this father showed his son grace and welcomed him home. Is there that sort of grace in your household? Are you willing to forgive your spouse before she even asks? Are you willing to forgive your husband before he even asks? I believe that one of the reasons that there's so much strife in, in families is, is because instead of bestowing grace to one another, instead of, you know, instead of forgiving one another, we use disagreements, we, we use these types of, of challenges in our life to, to have bargaining chips, to hold something over our mate, to hold something over our children in, in the days to come. Grace isn't about having a bargaining chip. But grace is about forgiveness. Grace is about not holding it over their head, not, not granting forgiveness with, with conditions. But granting forgiveness and, and being able to, to start afresh. The Father in this story models grace. The Father in this story models forgiveness. Is this type of grace, is this type of forgiveness something that you see in, in relationships in, in your home? Between husband and wife, between parents and children? Or maybe be between children. The son confessed his sin. He said everything just as he had re rehearsed it, just as he was going to say to his father. But the father didn't make him squirm. The father didn't make him uncomfortable. The, the father didn't try and make him negotiate. The father didn't try and safeguard himself from, from future pain. But rather... The Father offered him forgiveness. The Father gave him grace. Verse 22 says, But the Father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. See what happened with the, the father's gracious response to, to his son? But it didn't end with everyone celebrating. Because there was another son that was out in the field. And that other son that uh, was out in the field, he came in and, and he wasn't happy about what was going on. He came in and, and heard about the party and heard that his, his uh, younger brother had come home and and that older brother wasn't happy about the fact that his son, his brother had come home. And even less happy about the fact that his brother had come home was the fact that his father was throwing a party. You know, when we extend grace, even in our own households, there may be those who don't think it is fair. Grace-filled acts are not always understood by others. Grace-filled acts are not understood by others as being fair. But yet that's who God calls us to be.